you have to finish that elaboration with emphasis on the point that you are trying to prove or that you are trying to describe in the body. Hello everyone, a very good evening and welcome to Plutus IAS. So guys, today we are going to discuss basic tricks and trips that you need to score wonderful marks in your economics optional. Okay, as you have got your mains paper starting from 20th of September. So I'm going to give you very important, free, very important tricks that will help you a lot in scoring good marks in your economics optional. Okay, so let's get started. So see guys, as you all are aware, that if you have taken economics optional or any other optional for that sake so your syllabus is being segregated into two papers that is paper one and paper two right and each paper is of 250 marks the weightage of the paper is 250 marks now see guys being the student of economics optional your potential of qualifying UPSC is very high, right? And economics optional is a subject in which you can easily score 60 to 65% of marks. That means getting 300 to somewhere between 325 is quite possible in economics optional out of 500 obviously. But there are certain things that you have to keep in mind to score such good marks in UPSC and these are very good marks because if you look at the topper that means AIR1 in UPSC so the aggregate percentage of AIR1 ranges between 52% to 54% okay and look here economics optional in economics optional you can easily get 60 to 65 percent so just look at the leverage just look at the advantage that will be provided to you by economics optional but how how to score these marks that's the question so see if i talk about paper one hmm? paper one is sort of technical in paper one we have got micro macro money banking and public finance international economics and growth and development right out of these portions guys i'm not saying that any portion is less important or you should skip it but i'm just telling you the portions which are relatively more important so money banking public finance international economics number one number two <coughs> then this is combined micro and macro number three and growth and development number four that's the priority order that i will give to these portions okay because if you look at the past year papers so major chunk of questions have been asked from money banking and public finance in micro then comes your international economics third is combined micro and macro and fourth is growth and development but here growth and development is a very easy portion all of it is easy but again comparatively growth and development is easier so don't skip it there are various models in growth and development and directly in the paper they ask you about the model so if you write the model you'll get full marks and when i say full i mean 60 to 65 percent okay so Growth and development is easy, don't skip it. But priority wise, number one is money banking and public finance. Okay. Now, see, guys, if we talk about micro, so in micro also, the most important portion is markets. Mostly, the questions of micro are asked from the market section. Fine. Okay. So, this was the overview of it. Now, how to write our answers? As I told you that paper one is mostly technical. So, your key area of focus, let me write it with red ink. Your focus here should be on the curves or graphs. You have to be very particular about curves and wherever it is possible, 
you have to incorporate curves in your answers okay secondly if there is any formula related to the topic which you are answering so do mention the formula okay and you have to highlight it and close it within the box thirdly there are certain keywords which are very important for that particular answer for example let me give you an example if you talk about let's say they ask you describe volrasian equilibrium so in volrasian equilibrium the keyword is interdependence of the market for example if we are talking about walrus equilibrium then the keyword is interdependence of the market so if you write interdependence of the market then you imprint a very good impression on the brains of the examiner okay so please be mindful of the keywords okay now if we talk about any answer so i can broadly classify the answer into three categories one portion is your intro second is the body of the answer and third is the conclusion <coughs> so what you have to do in intro is in intro please try to use the keywords and try to hit the bull's eye don't beat around the bush in the intro first you read the question understand the gist of the question that what actually it is asking from you and then just few words of two to three lines related to that point you have to write in your intro portion clear in body you have to describe what you have uh, what you have informed about in intro you have to elaborate that thing in the body of the answer here in the body you will use the curves or graphs you will use the formulas okay and the description of the point that you are trying to make and finally comes your conclusion in conclusion the theory that you have illustrated the elaboration that you have done in the body you have to finish that elaboration with emphasis on the point that you were trying to prove or that you were trying to describe in the body your conclusion should always be pinpointed towards the ending that means you have to say that hence for example hence by the above description we see that this this is this that's it that's all you have to do in the conclusion one more thing guys do remember that if you write your answers in the point in point wise format then you always tend to score higher marks so point wise approach is always appreciable instead of going for the paragraphs i will ask you or suggest you to apply point wise approach okay see i know not much time is left for your mains and you all might be in a lot of tension or stress what i'll ask you to do is practice as many questions as you can your main focus should be on pyqs if you are doing practice of the questions then focus on past year questions because in economics optional 50 to 55% of the questions that come in the paper are repetitive in nature yeah they can change the language they can change the formatting but the gist of the question would be repetitive okay so if you are trying to practice answer writing then instead of going for various test series try to focus on past year questions in these remaining days okay and here at plutus is i am preparing the solution of past year questions you can go to the youtube channel of plutus is go to the playlist i am preparing a playlist where i have segregated it according to the topics and have made few videos also on microeconomics so micro macro money banking public finance you'll get all these topics and the videos on the solution of the question which was asked in the previous year okay that being said moving on to the paper 2 the syllabus of paper 2 if i 
want to write it in two words it's indian economy pre independence post independence till date everything related to indian economy you can segregate it according to agriculture according to the industries or manufacturing hub service sector different segregations are possible but the syllabus is indian economy only what i will suggest that here first of all you should be well versed with the economic survey and i'll ask you to prepare the economic surveys of 3 years but that means this year previous year and year before previous year so these 3 years of economic survey you should do then annual budget see guys this time you have to do interim as well as full fledged budget that has been presented by the finance minister okay then guys there is a book that is again launched by the indian government the name of the book is india please go through this book it is again segregated into various portions that is economical portion polity and all you go through it it is published by indian government you will get a very good idea okay about the current scenario fine and then again the past year questions of indian economy these are very effective okay they will tell you the format in which upsc asks the question how to frame the answer it will remain the same as i told you in the previous scenario hmm, of paper 1 okay and guys in economics you should not focus on writing too many words or being too elaborative be crisp be to the point here in economics the most important thing is your concept if you are writing the concept in a lucid way even without the use of many bombastic words then too you'll get good marks in comparison to someone who is not focusing on the concept rather focusing on the language okay so that's the advantage of economics just the conceptual clarity normal presentation with all the things covering whatever has been asked you'll get wonderful marks so all the best guys i hope you perform well in your mains economics option thank you